Imagine flying through the sky faster than sound. This is what it was like to fly on the Concorde. The Concorde was an amazing airplane, a sign of luxury and speed. It was the best of superfast travel. It was like a dream come true, a glimpse into the future from the past century. The tale of the Concorde started during the Cold War. The world was divided and everyone was racing, not just for power or control, but for the best technology. The aim, to rule the sky with airplanes that could fly faster than sound. The United States, the Soviet Union, France and the UK all were trying to achieve this goal. But it was France and the UK who worked together to create something special. They both wanted the same thing, to break the sound barrier and change what was possible in flying. This project required a lot of resources, the best technology and a readiness to face the unknown. But together, they started this exciting adventure which led to the creation of the Concorde. The development of the Concorde turned out to be significantly more expensive than initially projected. The final cost of the Concorde project is estimated to have been around £1.3 billion by the time the aircraft entered service in 1976. This figure, when adjusted for inflation, would be much higher in today's terms. The Concorde not just another airplane, it was a sign of progress and wealth. It showed the best of human creativity and our ability to overcome challenges. To travel on the Concorde was like experiencing the future, flying at speeds that were unthinkable before. But more than that, the Concorde stood for unity. It was a project made possible by two countries working together, showing that shared goals and teamwork can lead to great things. It showed that even in times of competition and conflict, unity and teamwork can lead to amazing things. The Concorde was not just an airplane, but a sign of ambition and unity. It showed what we can do when we dream big and work together to make those dreams come true. Building a super fast plane was not a simple job. As we look into how the Concorde was made, we enter a world of special design problems, political issues and money matters that required something really special. The Concorde was not just any plane. Its design came from big dreams and new technology. The most special part, the triangle wing, was a wonder of engineering. This shape allowed the plane to handle the pressures of both slow takeoffs and landings and fast supersonic flight. But the wings were just the start. The Concorde also had four strong Olympus engines, specially made to push the plane faster than the speed of sound at 1,350 miles an hour, a thing few other passenger planes could do but even the best materials at that time had problems with the extreme heat made by supersonic flight. To solve this, engineers used a mix of aluminium and lithium, making a lighter, stronger metal able to handle extreme conditions. Did you notice that the nose of the Concorde looks different at times because it was designed to be adjustable? This unique feature allowed the nose to be lowered for better visibility during takeoff, landing and taxiing. When in flight, Especially at supersonic speeds, the nose was raised to streamline the aircraft's shape for optimal aerodynamics. This adjustability was crucial for balancing the need for pilot visibility at lower speeds with the necessity of reducing aerodynamic drag at high speeds, making the Concorde both efficient and safer during critical phases of flight. It was a smart solution out of need and this mindset helped create the Concorde. But the Concorde was not just made by engineers, it also came from a special political and money partnership between two countries, France and the UK. During a when the Cold War made the world nervous, these two countries chose to work together instead of compete. They combined their resources, shared their skills and faced the problem together. Engineers began working on the Concorde project after Britain and France signed a treaty in 1962 to develop the world's first supersonic passenger airline. It was a strong move, but it worked. The Concorde was a sign of human cleverness and showed what can happen when countries work together. It was more than just a plane. It was a sign of progress, a message to the future. And despite the problems, the late nights and the many tests, the Concorde took off. It was amazing to watch, a sign of human cleverness and marked a new time in flying. Against all odds, the Concorde flew, changing aviation forever. The legend started and travel was never the same again. From the initial stages of planning and development, it took approximately 14 years before the Concorde made its first commercial flight. This includes the design, engineering, testing phases and overcoming numerous technological challenges. 
The first commercial flights of the Concorde occurred on January 21, 1976. There were actually two inaugural flights that day. One operated by British Airways from London Heathrow to Bahrain and another by Air France from Paris, Charles de Gaulle to Rio de Janeiro via Dakar. These flights marked the beginning of the Concorde service as the world's only supersonic passenger jet, offering a dramatically faster travel time across long distances. This meant people could travel faster than ever before. The Concorde flew so quickly it could cross the Atlantic in just three and a half hours. This is still unmatched today. The Concorde took people from London and Paris to New York, Washington, Rio de Janeiro and Barbados. But what was it like to fly on the Concorde? Just picture yourself enjoying a glass of champagne while flying at a very high speed. The Concorde was very luxurious. It had comfortable leather seats, great food and famous passengers. Everyone from movie stars to royalty loved to travel on the Concorde. But the Concorde also had some problems. Its loud noise caused issues leading to rules about where it could fly. Also, the Concorde used up a lot of fuel. This made it very expensive to run and meant tickets cost a lot. Only very rich people could afford to fly on the Concorde. To give a general idea, a round-trip ticket from New York to London could cost upwards of $12,000 in the late 1990s and early 2000s, just before the Concorde was retired in 2003. Adjusted for inflation, this would be significantly higher in today's dollars. It also caused environmental problems because it released a lot of harmful gases into the air. But even with these problems, the Concorde was loved by many. Its engine design and the need to maintain supersonic speeds meant that the Concorde consumed significantly more fuel per passenger than conventional jets. This increased fuel consumption led to higher emissions of carbon dioxide and nitrogen oxides, which are contributors to greenhouse gases and atmospheric pollution. It was more than just a plane, it was a sign of luxury and success. The Concorde was a symbol of a time when people believed anything was possible. It showed us that the sky was not the limit, but the beginning of our dreams. In July 2000, a terrible accident happened that ended the happy times of super-fast air travel. The Concorde had a serious crash. This shocked everyone and changed the way we think about air travel history. On a sad summer day, Air France Flight 4590, a Concorde flight, crashed just after it took off from Paris. The crash resulted in the deaths of all 109 passengers and crew on board. Additionally, four people on the ground were also killed, bringing the total number of fatalities to 113. It was the first and only deadly accident involving the Concorde. People all over the world were shocked to see the plane, which was a symbol of luxury and advanced technology, destroyed. The accident in Paris made many people lose their trust in the Concorde, question its place in air travel. The crash was caused by a metal strip from another plane, a Continental Airlines DC-10 on the runway, which caused a tire on the Concorde to burst during takeoff. Pieces of the tire punctured a fuel tank, starting a fire that led to the crash. This showed that the Concorde had design problems that hadn't been thought of before, and it marked a big change in the way it was operated. After the crash, the people who run the aviation industry took quick action. Air France and British Airways, the two airlines that flew the Concorde stopped flying their Concords for over a year. This break gave them time to investigate what caused the crash and to make necessary safety improvements. They made the Concorde safer by lining the fuel tanks with Kevlar and using tires that couldn't burst. Despite these improvements, the crash in Paris had a long-lasting effect on how people saw the Concorde. The crash, along with growing worries about the environment and a downturn in the economy at the start of the 2000s, caused fewer people to fly on the Concorde. The Concorde, once seen as a symbol of luxury and speed, was now seen differently. The crash in Paris was a key point in the Concorde's history, highlighting the difficulties and dangers of super-fast air travel. This started discussions about whether it was safe and practical to have such quick flights. The crash was the beginning of the end for the Concorde. The time of super-fast passenger air travel was coming to an end, but the Concorde's legacy would live on. In 2003, the famous Concorde plane took its last trip. This news made many plane lovers around the world feel sad. The people who decided to stop using this special plane didn't do it without thinking hard about it. They had to consider money problems, fewer passengers and the sad plane crash in 2000. The Concorde used to symbolize luxury and speed, but it was becoming too costly to keep it running. 
it was always expensive to operate these super fast flights. And now, newer planes that use less fuel made the Concorde seem less practical. Also, fewer people wanted to pay for expensive tickets on the Concorde. People were not as excited about super fast travel as before. The crash in Paris it made people even more scared to fly. Even with these issues, the last flights of the Concorde were very emotional. Pilots, passengers and fans came together to say goodbye to plane that stood for human creativity and big goals. The last trips were filled with both happy memories and sadness, well as pride for what the Concorde achieved. The last flight of the Concorde was a heartfelt moment that will always be remembered in aviation history. As the Concorde vanished into the horizon one last time, people all around the world felt a sense of loss. This was more than just a plane retiring, it was the end of a special period. A time when people dreamed of crossing the Atlantic in less than four hours and actually did it. As the engines revved up for the last time and the Concorde took off into the sky, an important part of aviation history was ending. A part that started with a dream of flying faster than sound and ended with a sad goodbye to a famous plane. The Concorde's retirement marked the end of a special time. And what a time it was. The Concorde was a special plane that made a big difference in how we think about air travel. It wasn't just a plane, it showed how brave and creative people can be. It stood for speed and new technology. The Concorde wasn't just for getting from one place to another, it was a fun and luxurious way to travel. It brought about new advances in plane design, like its unique wing shape and strong engines. The Concorde helped to change how we design planes, but it did more than just change how we fly, it also changed how we think about the world. It made it easy to fly across the ocean in just a few hours. It made it normal for rich and famous people to fly frequently, creating a special group of passengers in the sky. The Concorde was a sign of luxury and a reminder of a different time. Now, let's think about what's next. Even though the Concorde isn't flying anymore, the idea of faster than sound travel isn't gone. Many companies and projects are trying to make super fast travel real again. New technology, materials and designs are helping to create planes that could be even better than the Concorde, but we're not sure if we'll ever see a plane just like the Concorde again. The future is exciting and we can't wait to see what's next. Please keep an eye on our channel for a video on the future of supersonic travel. Even if we never see another Concorde, its impact will continue to inspire and change the future of air travel for many years to come. As we come to the end of this fascinating journey through the history of the Concorde, we invite you to share your personal experiences and thoughts. Did you ever have the chance to fly with the Concorde? If so, we'd love to hear about your experience. Share with us your stories, your impressions, your memories. Was it a dream come true for you too? Or perhaps you have thoughts on what the Concorde symbolized for you or for the world? The Concorde might have been retired, but its legacy lives on in the hearts and minds of those who experienced it. And while we're at it, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. We're always working on bringing you more fascinating stories from the world of aviation technology, innovation and human achievement. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to our channel because in an upcoming video we'll dive into the Tupolev Tu-144. Its remarkable similarity to the Concorde was so notable that Western journalists called it Konkordski. See you next time.